Hallelujah. Amen, amen. If I'm going to go ahead and rise to your feet, why don't you greet your neighbor standing next to you as we open up our service, giving honor and glory to Papa God. Amen, amen. How many of you know that he's worthy to be praised? Amen. Lift your holy hands and just bless him where you are. Oh, Abba, Father, we glorify you, King of the universe, Father. We worship you this morning, Father. We open our hearts to you, Father God, and ask that you continue to do a good thing in our hearts, Father, to do a great thing in our lives, Lord. Oh, we bless you, Father. Turn to someone, say, I love the Lord. Turn to someone else, say, and he loves you too. Amen. Let's go ahead and worship him.
addiction to every dark addiction starts to bring. but a hand wave for the Lord. Amen. I speak Jesus over your family. I speak Jesus over your finances. I speak Jesus over your health right now. In the name of Jesus, I speak his name over every fiber of your being, over every cell in your body. I declare the name of Jesus over you. I declare the name of Jesus over your children. I declare the name of Jesus from generation to generation. I declare the name of Jesus over this church in the name of Jesus. I declare the name of Yeshua HaMashiach from the top of your head to the soles of your feet to the tips of your fingertips. Glory, glory, glory. Kabul, kabul, kabul. Oh, Father, Abba, Father, we worship you, Lord. We continue to thank you. Our Father is Avenu Malkinu. He's our faithful Father. Not just any Father. He's a faithful Father. He's the King of the universe. He's a monarch of the universe. Oh, Father, we worship you, Lord. Has the Lord been good to you, family? Amen, amen. Let's continue to worship him. Let's continue to worship him.
some faces out here today and now it is time for our daily devotional and I have the pleasure so first of all glory to God um, thank you to our lovely pastor mom um, pray for safe travels as she's in Kauai um, thank you to our uh, pastor Bronson and our pastor dad uh, for allowing me to give you guys a devotional today so today's topic for the devotional is his fullness in us his fullness in us our opening scripture comes from the book of john 3 34 and it says for he whom god has sent speaketh the words of god for god giveth not the spirit by measure unto him christ in you signifies that god resides in you in his fullness not in parts not in measure this is an immensely significant truth, one that cannot be overstated. Just as the Holy Spirit dwelt in Christ, he now dwells in you. Have you really taken the time to contemplate this truth? Colossians 1.19, referring to the Lord Jesus says that in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. We can readily accept that the fullness of God dwells in Jesus. But the same is true of us in Christ Jesus. Just as we read it, just as we read that it pleased the Father to have all the fullness of God dwell in Jesus, Colossians 2:10 says, "And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power." Now you can better understand why Paul would pray in Ephesians 3:19 that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. He wanted them to experience this ministry of the Holy Spirit and come to the realization of this, of this truth about the indwelling fullness of God. Ephesians 1, 22, 23 says, we, the church, are his body. We're the fullness of him that's filled all in all. Hallelujah. John 1, 16 says, for out of his fullness, we have all received. This is God's purpose for us, to be filled with his fullness. So not only is this a possibility, this is our reality in Christ. He lives with every fiber of your being in your spirit, soul, and body. Understanding this is transformative. It is what will change the world. We must act upon it. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and repeat this confession after me, please. Say, I'm full of God. I've received of his fullness. His ability, wisdom, grace, power and strength. His glory is in me and expressed through me. Therefore, my life is a continuous manifestation of Christ 
and the supernatural. I impact my world with the power and dominion of Christ's righteousness that I bear. In Jesus' name, can I get an amen, church? Amen and amen. Go ahead and pay attention to our screen. fight but they do not know the infinite size of the god who is by my side hey on the fire but my goliath standing in the shadow of the almighty i ain't lying just testifying man i'm talking about a big god big god when trouble comes around Media. Media, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And um, for those who don't know, that was uh, our food bank yesterday. Um, uh, we go, we're, we're going right into announcements, yes. Uh, so that's part of the announcement um, that is uh, our 
Food bank every third Saturdays of the month. If you want to serve, you should be serving, and you, should, you ought to be serving, right? But if you do want to, uh, please come on out every third Saturday of the month. For more information, just get with one of our ushers in the back, and we'll fill you in with the details of it. Uh, also, part of the announcement is I'm um, going to announce about our foundation classes. Uh, let's see if there, if there you go. The foundation classes, what, are the, well, what these classes are for, you know, the title in itself speaks for its uh, same foundation classes. After, um, you know, that you're born again, um, we are not just hearers of the word, but we are definitely doers of the word. These classes uh, is a, a basic principles of to help you start on your walk, help you understand more of who you are in Christ and of your foundation, of your faith, how you can go about and, you know, just not be a hearer of the word, but be a doer or to be a spearheading of everything. And the foundation classes have different classes that breaks down for you, the different topics that will help you in your walk. Um, they're every, uh, every Mondays at 7 p.m., the awesome thing is, you don't have to go to a physical class. However, it's Zoom. Yeah, it's Zoom. You, uh, we send you the link, and you'll pop it right open, and all you got to do is just tune in, pay attention, and do your homeworks. Yes, praise the Lord. But that's our foundation classes. Please, uh, if, you have, if you want more information on these, please get with uh, one of us or our ushers in the back as well. And the other announcement that we're having here is our mass deliverance that is coming up on the 25th, which is next week, Friday. If you know somebody who is in need of deliverance, or if you yourself uh, need deliverance as well, this will be a perfect time to come in because this is part of who we are as men and women of God. We no longer play defense. This is offense. We're coming in and we infiltrating. We're going into their territory, and we putting our foot down with the name of Jesus Christ and showing them who is really Lord of Lord, King of Kings. Yeah. So this is a moment that um, you know uh, that is highly recommended because uh, Christians have the mentality that once I'm saved, I'm good to go. Um, that's only part of your step. Uh, you know, for yourself, for yourself, uh, you know. It is, it is needed for you. It's recommended. It's not forced upon you, but it is highly recommended for you if you want to set the captives free. Yes. So for more information, please, once again, you can always tune in with us, and we'll give you more details. And that will be next week, Friday on the 25th. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was our announcement. All right, so we're going to go right into it. First and foremost, uh, we give all the glory to God. Because he deserves all the glory, yes? And of course, I want to always give uh, honor where honor is due and respect uh, to our highly esteemed pastor mom. I know she's in uh, Kauai right now, ministering, not on vacation. She say, always say there's no such thing as spiritual vacation, right? She's out there. She's over there. She's spreading the gospel over there. She's ministering the world. We pray that the people over there receive a word in season and a deep revelation of the word that is been prepared since the beginning of time for those souls over there yes yeah? so thank you so much pastor mom for this great opportunity that you always um, share with me to have this opportunity to share the word of God so praise the Lord but before we go right into the word let's just open up with a word of prayer father we just honor you today father God we thank you for everybody who's present here and everybody that's also tuning in Lord we pray thank you that the work of the Holy Spirit is high be so evident today that a word in season has been prepared for the souls who have chose to be here, even those who are able to tune in. Father, we thank you that the word is out, that two-double-edged sword that continually cuts down, down to the marrow, and cuts off things that are unnecessary in their lives. Father, we thank you that the word of the Holy Spirit is fire, 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 burning away the unnecessary things of this world, but only making that gold into pure gold, Father God. And that is you in our lives, Father. We just give you the glory and the praise. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering uh, to me today. Speak with the word that you want them to understand and know and of your knowledge and your wisdom, Holy Spirit. We're here to receive, receive, receive with hearts of joy. We glorify you, we praise you, and we magnify you, Father God. And all of this, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior and all the saints of God come to an agreement by saying, Amen. All right, family. Are you guys ready? Come on, strap on your seat belts, but 
Let's go. It's going. We're not going 50 miles per hour. We're above that. The title for today is called The Final Crossover. All right? One more time. The title for today is called, is titled The Final Crossover. See, crossing over is a symbol in the, like, in biblical times or in the Bible. Crossover is a symbol of, like, the final stage, yeah? The finality. The finale. Ending one and beginning a new one, right? So, the final crossover. Let me just start off by talking about, so we're going to go strategically laid out here. And how from the Old Testament into, uh, to our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach. But of course, we're gonna, we want to start out with our, uh, the father of the faith, you know, the Abraham, yeah? Talk about him here. We all know who Abraham is, right? He was the one who uh, is the father of our, this faith, that everybody's been multiplied up until this point. The story of Abraham, let me just uh, bring it up uh, briefly in a synopsis. So God had um, came into his life, and um, because of his faith is the reason why Abraham uh, was called a friend of God, right? But we all know the story where the ultimate test, because he was so faithful to God. He, he had everything and whatnot, because this man was blessed to a point where I shared last time that he was so wealthy and prosperous that the land could not contain his wealth. I have never seen that or heard of that except in the Bible. So wealthy and prosperous that the land could not contain his wealth. This is how blessed Abraham was because of his faith, right? So, but then, even though irrespective that he had everything, there was one thing that he and his wife really wanted, and that was a son. Finally, that opportunity was given to them, and finally they had a son named Isaac, right? But then the ultimate of all tests came when the Lord said, take your son up to a place and prepare, uh, prepare him because you will be sacrificing him to me. Without questioning, without trying to find excuses, this man of God took his son. I know, you know, irrespective, you can never, in naturally speaking, us as parents, that was told to us, hmm, come on now. We know what, what's going to really happen. So much thing will be tucking in our hearts. I know that this is a man of God. He's a man of faith. Irrespective of what he may be feeling, he said, yes, Lord. So he took his son up. And you guys know uh, how the outcome was. He was about to sacrifice his son when the angel came down. Oh, stop. Okay, now I know that you are a man of faith. So from him on, because of that faithfulness, it showed you know, uh, how faithful he was, and down from him was, was his descendants, right? But you see, Abraham was just a man of God at that time. His classification of who he is changed only the time when he crossed over, and that's where the Hebrews, he was the first Hebrew, all right? What is the definition of Hebrew? Like they're saying that the word Hebrew means the other side, coming from the other side, crossing over from the other side, right? Well, you see, in the book of Genesis, the first time that it talked about, mentioned Abraham, is in the book of Genesis, chapter 14, verse 13. Genesis 14, verses 13. And this is the first time we see uh, Abraham be referred to as in Hebrew. And he says, a man who had escaped came and reported this to Abram, the Hebrew. Now Abram was living near the great trees of Mamre, the Amorite, a brother of Eshcol and Aner, all of whom were allied with Abram. All right? So this is after Abram crossed over, crossed over the Euphrates River, excuse me, the Euphrates River, and started living in the land of Canaan. Once he crossed over, he, was, he became the first Hebrew, all right? What does Hebrew mean? The other side, crossing over from the other side, all right? So that's what I want to bring about. Remember, there is something significant about this crossing over thing. That is what I'm trying to get to you with you today, all right? So once again, Hebrew word meaning the other side and conceivably referring again to Abraham, who crossed into the land of Canaan from the other side of the Euphrates, right? 
Um, look, in book of Joshua 24, chapter 24, verse 3, it says, But I brought Abraham across the Euphrates River and led him through the land of Canaan. That is the evidence that we know that um, Abraham had crossed over. He would cross over which river? The Euphrates River, right? I blessed him by giving him Isaac, the first in line of many descendants, right? So that was Abraham. He crossed over the Euphrates River, and then something significant happened. He became the first Hebrew, all right? So now, going back all the way to the Israelites being into Egypt, right? We all know the story of how the Israelites eventually ended up in Egypt and multiplied, and they were blessed and they just continued to multiply, and uh, Pharaoh said, you know what, we need to control this because they're just multiplying these Israelites, these Hebrews, right? Now they're referred to as Hebrews. So you guys know the story, uh, and then uh, they became slaves to Egypt, right? They, were, they became the manpower for Egypt. So they were crying out to the Lord, and you guys know it, that finally um, their deliverer that was appointed by God was Moses. He came. All right, so, and you guys know the, the, the time of Moses, this is what happened in Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 to 16. Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 to 16. So, yes, Moses came, came into picture, him and his brother Aaron went down to Egypt, and then basically tell Pharaoh, the Lord said, let my people go. In other words... All of this that is building everything for you, your manpower, you have to let them go. I'm sorry. And then, of course, you know the story. Pharaoh said, no, who are you? And who there sent you to come and talk to me, right? And then he said, it is our, our, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. And then he got, he's, he's going to tell them that. And it's like, nope, nope. And you guys know, the plagues, he, because he was stubborn. The plagues came. The, the word of God says that the Lord made Pharaoh's heart stubborn. So the plagues came and whatnot. Plague after plague after plague. Finally, the one that took the life of all the firstborns was the one that did it. Right? So finally, Pharaoh said, you know what? You guys are too much headache for me. Be gone with you. Take your people and go. Be gone with you. Moses did what he was to, came to do. Right? The Lord is almighty. Rounded up all the people, the Hebrews. Right? And let's go. They started marching, leaving. And you guys know the, you know the story. Pharaoh, his heart was made hearted by the Lord again. and said, you know what? No, round up all the chariots and let's go get those people. Let's go. So they chased them, right? You guys know the story. Chasing them down and finally they got led to where? The Red Sea. Out of all places. Desert. They, they go all oh, This is the Lord Almighty leading them, right? You could have taken a route around it or maybe strategically in another way, but the Lord led them straight to the Red Sea. Hmm. Could it be anywhere? It could have, but it wasn't. It was right in front of the Red Sea. And then they got there and they stood in front of the Red Sea, and all they know is, well, I think we're done, yeah? They started complaining and pickering at Moses. You led us here to die. And you know the funny thing? They're very sarcastic out there. We talked to Moses, right? Wasn't there graves in Egypt that uh, you could have just buried us over there? But instead you brought us all the way here to bury us over here so we can die over here. Wasn't there graves in Egypt? Very sarcastic that these people. After this man let them out of Egypt, he stepped up to the plate. Nobody else did but one man decided to obey and be obedient, came and not only that, he used to live there. You could imagine what he was going through. But the thing is, the truth is he came back and he let them go. They were still being sarcastic against him. So standing in between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army. All right, so that is, that's it. But remember the, the title again, right? It's about crossovers, something significant about the crossovers. So... In Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 to 16. Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 to 16. And it says, Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. 
The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. Come on. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Go. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Then he did, and you guys know it. Red Sea, boom, split in two. Miracle, power of God. Then that's what they did. They passed through there on dry ground. They went through there. They crossed over to the other side. Once again, crossed over to the other side. At first, it was Abraham who crossed over the Euphrates. Something happened. He became the first what? Hebrew. Now the Hebrews, who has been set free by Moses, got stuck there. But with the power of God and the grace of God, split the Red Sea open. And then... They crossed over on dry ground. And then, of course, the Egyptians went in, but the sea closed up, and that was the end of it. That was the beginning. That was the end. The end was on the other side. The beginning was on the other side when they crossed over. So they crossed over. That was the beginning of a new chapter in their lives. Literally, God took out Egypt out of the picture. Literally. So he crossed over on the other side. All right. Then you guys know the story on all, right? There was a promised land for these people. They were promised a land, a promised land of milk and honey. Sounds good. A land of milk and honey. All right. So let's go. So they, you know, you know the story. They went about people still being disobedient and being Stiff-necked, that's what the Word of God says. Stiff-necked people, disobedient, always pickering and complaining. Even though there was power right in front of them, they just saw the Red Sea split. Not good enough. You brought us out here to die. Woe is me. Moses like walking around. Oh, uh, <laughs> what else you like me do? Huh? That's why he would go and just fall down on his knees and just... You know, cry out to the Lord. But the Lord will always encourage him. Be strong. Be strong. Because these, I know that these are stiff-necked people. But be strong because they are chosen for a reason. So he kept going. Let's go. All right. But because of things that they did that the Lord did not like, he said, you know what? That generation that came across, that crossed over, will not enter that promised land. That generation will die out first before you even think about entering into that promised land. So that's why there was wandering now. Slowly people who saw all these powers who were initially in slavery, they came over and they crept, passed through the Red Sea. That, those people initially were the ones that was told that they will not enter the promised land because of that complaining thing that they have. Instead of having the fear of the Lord, they decided of their own. It's all about me, me, me. No, nah, unacceptable. The promised land is for people with the right mindset, pureness, right? Just like when the Lord comes back without blemishes. You cannot enter into that promised land with blemishes. So, negative. So slowly, they were in that desert for how many? 40 what? Years, right? Yeah. They were in there. Finally, they, they died up. But then their children is rising up. These were the ones that were chosen to go into that promised land. So Moses was like, yes, finally, no. Let's go. But then Moses himself did something that he wasn't supposed to do. He was not obedient. He acted on his himself. Somebody, everybody has a breaking point, yeah? Everybody has a breaking point. That was Moses. He had a breaking point, but you know what? He's not just any man. He was anointed and chosen by God. Therefore, you are expected to think and do the things of God the way you're told to do because you, there's so much has been poured upon you. You're not just any other man. You are an anointed man. But because of a little bickering, out of everybody, every that complaining the whole time over here, he just did 
that one mistake, the Lord said, because of what you did, you too will not enter into the promised land. And then 515 times, 515, 16, around there, 500 something times, he was asking the Lord for forgiveness. But finally, the word of God says, the Lord said, enough of this. You will not enter there. That's it. Enough. However, because of grace, I will let you see from a distance. I'd rather not just see as, ah, okay, I'm good then. Because I'm going to sit there and just watch everything. But it's by grace, yeah? The Lord said, you know what? Come here and see. That is the promised land that they will enter in, not you. But you know what? The Lord always takes care, yeah? But then he said, you will have, will need somebody. So that's why Joshua was appointed. He was the next man in line, right? So the Lord said, I mean, no, the Bible word says that after for Moses had his final talk with the people, the main thing that he kept telling them was, you keep the word. Keep the word and obey the word. Because with that, with all things, only good things will come to you and come out of you. So, and then he encouraged them, and then he went up into a place, and that's where he died, yeah, just by looking across. Praise the Lord for Moses, huh? But then Joshua came into picture. So remember, so there was Abraham who crossed over the Euphrates River. Something significant happened. He became the first Hebrew. Then the Hebrews came out of Egypt. Then they crossed over through the Red Sea. Something significant happened, right? And then now, we thought that that was the, oh, that was the main thing in the Bible, oh, the Red Sea. If you, if you, if you think in that sea, only one, no, bro, check this out. If you didn't know, well, now you're going to know. All right? So there, that was the Red Sea that the Hebrews crossed over. Then Joshua was appointed to be the one to lead them into the promised land. All right? So, this is how it happened. In Joshua chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. Joshua chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. So now, they came down. They were going there. They were heading towards the promised land. But then, there was the Jordan River. Then they stopped there. All right? They stopped at the Jordan River. Could it be anywhere else? It could have, but it wasn't. They were led to the Jordan River, and the Lord said, okay, this is where we're going to camp. So they camped there. So in this scripture, this is where it says, so when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, right, the priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest. That means he was saying that it's flooded. You see in a river flooded, it's very scary because it's very powerful. It moves rocks. You can hear rocks tumbling, come, coming down. I, I used to live by a river back in the island. When there was high storms, you can hear like thunder. It's not thunder. It's rocks moving. <laughs> so this is how it was. The flood stage is the Jordan River, right? Yet, as soon as the priest who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zaradan. While the water flowing down to the Sea of the Arabah, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So as soon as their foot, the Levites, who was carrying the Ark of the Covenant, stepped in the Jordan River, their feet touched it. The word of God here said that it stopped miles up. And it just stopped and started going up, building up, high wall. Sounds familiar, yeah? Started familiar. But then, yep, so the power is completely cut off, every, everything else going down. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho, crossed over again. Huh? The priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. By now, they should have been in the millions. Nation crossed over Jordan River. 
Here we go again. The crossing over thing. Huh? Abraham crossed over. The Hebrews crossed over the Red Sea. And now the Hebrews again are crossing over the Jordan River. As soon as they went to the other side, something significant happened again. They started, that's where they entered into the promised land. Jericho fell. Cities after cities after cities fell. They were sacking all the cities. People who heard about them were in fear. They were already defeated before they even showed up. Something significant happened when they crossed over. Boom. And then, you know what? That's where they established themselves within the promised land of them. All right? Wow. What is going on with this crossing over thing? Amazing. But you see, the ultimate crossover of all. Ever since after the crossing of the Jordan, you didn't see anything else because now the people were established within the promised land. So now that they're established, they were meant to be there. That's why it's called the promised land. Irrespective of what it is, you will get there because I am, I am. That's all you need to know. I am uh, is I am. That's all you need to know. It's not because of what you know or what you can do. It's because of who I am. So the promised land was meant to be. So they got there. They got to the promised land. But they, it wasn't just because they got there and was there. Everything was already set up for them. All they had to do was take it. But they have to be crossing over. Finally, when they did the final crossover and they established themselves within the land, there goes, now, now the Hebrews, the Israelites are now a nation of a land. Okay? So from then on, you see, like, they wanted their first king. You know, Saul came into the picture. And then, of course, after that, there was David, you know, king, awesome David. And then, every, then there are the, uh, the, the prophets of old and whatnot coming down all the way down. They, they, they were already established. A preparation for the ultimate crossover that's about to happen. If we go to Luke chapter 2, verses 6 to 12. Luke chapter 2, verses 6 to 12. And this is what it says. While they were there, the shepherds, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. These guys were just watching their sheep, but the baby, the ultimate crossover happened, came through, was born in a manger. It was such a great, uh, great thing to celebrate that the angel, he says here that the angel just appeared among these guys who were just watching their sheep and wanted to celebrate with them. And they were afraid, right? But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. All of that crossing overs were setting up for the ultimate crossover. He was only meant to be born in that promised land. That land over there that they were, the Israelites were moving over there. Was that a crossover? Most definitely. But now it's spiritual. Now it is spiritual. Crossover from the spiritual side into our world. He crossed over into our world now. Yeah, come on now. And you see, so you guys know the story of Jesus from then on. Praise be to God that there is grace upon grace that he decided to do this crossover. So you guys know that Jesus grew up and he started his ministry when he was in his 30s, right? But you see, because of that ultimate crossover, even though it's ultimate, it's not the final. You guys are getting this. Ah, you see it. So he grew up and started doing his ministry Jesus doing all these beautiful things, showing how, showing us how we're supposed to be living as men and women of God, men with authority. 
People never hear anybody, any rabbi speak like he spoke. Because everybody was quoting what? The Torah. Everybody was quoting Torah. Everybody was talking about you know, the prophets of old and the kings and, and so and so. But he came in with a different language. He came in with a different mindset. And even more so, oh yeah, yeah. At one point, when he first, when he came in, they were going to do um, uh, Shabbat. It's in the book of Luke. They were about to do Shabbat. And they say, hey, you know what? That's their tradition. Let's read uh, uh, one of the scrolls. Yeah? And they say, hey, what about you, Yeshua? You know, because, you know, he's a rabbi that everybody's, you know, admiring right now, right? He was just starting his ministry. So why don't you read the scroll? And then, yeah, okay, thank you. So he went, opened the scroll and in the book of Isaiah. And he spoke of, you know, let me, let me put it up. I know I didn't put it to media to put it up, but this is something I wanted to share with you guys because that right there was authority and power. And the scroll, okay, it's in Luke chapter 4, verses 70 to 21. And I'll read it to you. I'll read it. Just listen. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, right? On rolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. After he read that, the Bible says, Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. They were looking at him. And then this is what he said. Today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. What scripture is that? The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Not only are you looking at the one, but because your ears heard the one spoke of it, it is now fulfilled. It is fulfilled because your spirit just heard what the word just spoke. That's what he's saying here. It's fulfilled in your hearing. Even though he was back then, at then, right now today, because you heard it, it's fulfilled in your life. In your, in your hearing. That's why he said, for those with ears, listen. Those with eyes, see. If you choose. That's a... That's how he spoke. Nobody ever heard spoke, and anybody spoke like that. With authority. And of course, with love. Nobody heard them, such rabbi spoke like that. So, the ultimate crossover happened when Jesus was birthed into this world. Now it's spiritual, right? Everything used to be physical, right? Crossing north, the Red Sea, the Euphrates, the Jordan. But now, a spiritual crossover has happened. So you guys know this. I'm not. Check this out. I'm going to give you this scripture, all right? In Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 31. And you guys know about this, but see the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And it says, immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. Who? While he dismissed the crowd. That's after he was preaching. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against them. It was, it was windy that night. It was stormy. Shortly after dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. 
But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, one of out of the twelve, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. On the water, come, the Lord said, he said. Then Peter got down of the, out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Yeshua. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Yeshua reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? The first Hebrew crossed over Euphrates River. But then when they multiplied, the Lord had to actually intervene. And they had to cross over the Red Sea. Right? And then there was the Jordan River. They had to cross over that one. Miracles were happening. But in this case, the creator didn't have to part any river. Why would he? Because he is the one. He is the creator. Instead, he's walking on the water. He didn't need to part the water because he is the one. He is the one who made the rivers, the seas. He walked on water because he is the one. And he's walking on water. But check this out. There, were, there was no need of a crossover because this is not the final crossover. Remember? There's, he's still in the work. So he's walking on water. But now, the disciples sitting in the boat, one out of 12, decided to say, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. Before the crossovers, the Lord would always tell the people, go. And then they would go. This is a time where the Lord didn't say, go. He said, come. He said, come. He said, come. That's all he said. Then he jumped out of the boat and was standing. This is the first Israelite. Then instead of crossing over dry ground, he stood on water. Stood on water and he went to the Lord. He walked on water. He defied the law of gravity. He defied anything that is natural in this world. He made the impossible possible. This is the first time the Lord said, come. Instead of saying, go. So he walked on water towards him. So that just proved that all things are possible. But then he says here, you know what? That fear crept up in him. That's why he started to sink. But that's why the Lord said, well, you of little, you know, why did you doubt, yeah? But you see, what is the significance of this whole thing? This right here. Is in preparation for the final crossover. For the final crossover. Life is spiritual. Everything is spiritual now. What is the final crossover? The rapture. That is the final crossover. You see, we're in preparation for that moment. Because every time the Hebrews, before they, before they cross, they had to prepare. They had to make sure that they were clean, that they were, you know, taken care of, that they were one right with the word before they crossed over. The Lord said that he will not come back for a church with blemish. We're in preparation for that final crossover, standing by. But you see, there's work that needs to be done to prepare before the crossovers. You are in a standby, but you know what? You need to work. You need to work. That's why it's called preparation. For those who are not doing the work are those who are going to be ended up cutting off from the, brand, you know, from the main branch. Because he will come back for the final crossover. And you see, one out of the twelve, even though they were with Jesus Christ, even though they slept with, you know, around him, they ate with him, they see him do miracles after miracles after miracles, only one spoke up. Typical, huh? Only one spoke up to say, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. The Lord said, come. He did not hesitate. He jumped off the boat. And what happened? Miracle. Miracles don't happen in the possibilities. It occurs in the impossibles. 
If you want to be in your possible places, that's your comfort zone. Because it's possible. But the Lord your God called you to do the things of the impossible things. Things that is not of this world. The things that you're going to do, people will see and it's like, how can he do that? It's because of the word, the word, the word. Miracles happen in the impossible places. Not the possible places. But if it's in the impossible places, that's where you should be going. That's where you are called to do. That's where you are called to be. There are places where you can see the power of God unveil and prepare for the final crossover, which is the rapture. Receive this message, man and woman of God. All of that from the days of Abraham, even way before that. But you see, the whole thing is connected. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth in the, in the book of Genesis. Then he gave spirit. He gave spirit to men. We were meant to go back over there. We were meant to be in that place. Our paradise that was made for us. But sin came into picture and you guys know the rest of the story. But this is already going back this way. We were supposed to go back to the one that we came from. In the image that we were made in. Man and woman of God, so many blood has been spilled for the sake of the gospel. Foundations were laid out. Blood were spilled for the sake of the gospel. Not just any man's blood, not just the followers, but the ultimate blood of all. The blood of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God, was spilled for you and I. And then after that, so many died for their faith because they believed that the Lord will return for the final crossover. Are you ready? Are you ready? Don't just say yes. Think about it. Think about it. Because when he comes, he's going to come. And I always tell my man cell group, the Lord at the moment is still our Savior. He's not yet a judge. Not yet. Yeah? Remember that. It's not yet. That's why you always got to say, Lord, just one more day so I can do my part. One more day so I can do my part. Even though we were waiting for the trumpet to roll, I am ready for the trumpet. But for the sake of those who are still in darkness, one more day, Lord, for their sake. Because I know where I'm going to be in, you know, in eternity. There's eternity of love and eternity of darkness. Just one more day. So are you ready for the final crossover? Be ready. And when you say you're ready, act on it. Don't just say it. Amen. You're a doer of the word, not just a listener of the word. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. I pray that you guys have received something today, uh, family. That is the word that I wanted to share with you guys today. I pray that uh, it administered to you. Even those, even those who are online... If this has moved you, and you know, we will never want to assume that everyone here has received Yeshua, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. We will never want to assume that, right? So we will always give this opportunity to those who have never received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So with an open mind, with an open heart, and with that Holy Spirit convicting you. Remember, it's not about your feelings. It's not about what you are going through. All of those are considered by the Lord your God. Because He knows you better than yourself. But to take the first step, you yourself have to do your own crossover. You have to. You have to do your own crossover before you can start this beautiful journey. It's not a journey that I'm going to say that it's, it's going to be a smooth journey. No. You're going to war in this journey. You're going to battle in this journey. But the end is worth it. So with an open heart, repeat this prayer for me. Say, oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ 
son of the living God. I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I was about a round of applause for the word of God here this evening. And may I ask, you know, uh, anybody in here, this is your first time uh, receiving salvation. Hallelujah. So I pray that you have received the word today. Let the word be with you at all times. Because all the prophets, even Moses before he left, before Joshua before he left, even down to the Lord himself, make, I would always speak about having the word inside of you. Always stay with the word. That means you got to find time with the word. If you can find time with anything else in this world for work, I got to be on time, right? Oh, I got to make it here. I got I to gotta have this in my fridge and all of those things. Time to shop. What about the Lord? The one who is your ultimate source. Everything else are just avenues. Make sure that you are tapping into the right source. And that is the word of God. May God bless you all. And may God continue to shine light, light upon you all and increase in abundance be upon your life. Shalom, shalom. Amen. Can we get a we love you, Pastor Bronson? Thank you, thank you. It is now time for our tithes and offerings. So if you need of an envelope, just go ahead and raise your hand, and then our usher will come down and pass it out to you. And I didn't uh, get to congratulate our very own Thule and a Marxist for their last night's win against St. Louis. It's an awesome game. And you know, at that game, a little girl, she came up to me, and she asked me, she said, are, are you created? Are you, were you made by God? I said, yeah. She said, am I made by God? I said, yeah, you're made by God not too long ago. And then she reached out. She touched my stomach, and she's like, she, he needs to use less Play-Doh. Uh, in Jesus' name, demon, get out. <laughs> but uh, if you have your envelope, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you have your envelope, let's just go ahead and put it to your heart, and then we'll pray for it. Amen. Thank you, Lord Father God, for your cheerful givers here today. Um, we thank you, Lord Father God, that they're obeying your word, that we're giving our 10% unto you because it is yours in the first place, Lord Father God. But we just thank you for your obedient givers here today, Lord Father God, that they're giving with their hearts, Lord Father God. Um, and we thank you that you bless them in every area of their life, Lord Father God, that um, you fill their storage house. Um, till it cannot contain, that you fill their cup till it overflows, Lord Father God, in their finances, their family life, their relationships, their jobs, whatever they're doing, Lord Father God, we pray that you bless them. And we pray for your hedge of protection on our way home, Lord Father God, that we travel in mercy. We pray for our pastor mom, um, that wherever she is, that you have your hedge of protection and your guardian angels to watch over her um, as she travels wherever she's go uh, she goes. And we thank you, Lord. We praise you, we honor you, we worship you. In Jesus' mighty matchless name, we all say amen and amen. Amen. Family, go ahead and rise to your feet as we conclude.